Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. Welcome to this edition of This is Jersey. Today we're in Freehold at the Monmouth County Sheriff's Office speaking with Sheriff Sean Golden. The Monmouth County Sheriff's Office is more than just an ordinary police station. It is the home base for more than 600 officers and employees that are dedicated to serving the law enforcement needs of the entire county of Monmouth. We had the opportunity today to speak about the building's inception as well as some of the functions that the Monmouth County Sheriff's Office serves for its community. Well, the Sheriff's Office, you know, we have four major divisions. We have Special Operations, the Law Enforcement, Communication, and Corrections Division. And within those divisions, we have various units, and certainly Emergency Management, where we're here in our Emergency Operations Center in the Sheriff's Office, is one of those. We have a large jail uh, with a correctional population of about 700 inmates. Uh, it is one of the largest facilities, county facilities, in the state of New Jersey. We're a fully credited agency for the Corrections Division, and we have just hard-working men and women that are there. We're about uh, rehabilitation and uh, it is called a correctional institution. These are short-term individuals, uh, inmates that are there um, and for recovery and for re-entry and to, you know to get them if they're not sentenced to the state prison system to get them back into our communities and so we do things like GED uh, high school equivalency uh, diplomas uh, that uh, are there and we offer that for our inmates. We also offer uh, work services and re-entry services, uh, you know, job placement and substance abuse counseling. Here in the Special Operations Center, you do a lot of things during emergencies. Tell me the different components of what happens here during a disaster. Sure. So, you know, in the Monmouth County Sheriff's Office, we have emergency management. And as one of those components, uh, this is what the Operations Center is for. Uh, we manage all our emergencies and have all our pre-planning meetings here. So this is where it occurs for our emergency management team. We have one of the best coordinators in the state of New Jersey, Michael Obergaard. He is our emergency management coordinator, led us the way through Sandy through all our evacuations and shelter and process and, and then our mitigation grants. He's done a tremendous job and with his team of emergency managers that work for the Sheriff's Office. And so in this center that you're in, as you can see, this provides us a lot of real-time information and data, um, that damage assessment, video uh, captures all throughout the um, county of Monmouth, and all that feeds back real-time for us to make some decisions. In a room, um, in this room, we have the ability to uh, communicate. Everyone has a seat here. All the major utility players have a seat, JCP&L, New Jersey Natural Gas, all the sewage and water authorities uh, throughout the county. Those are all the players that we need in this room to make important decisions when there's an emergency going on. Now, this building wasn't around when Sandy happened, but tell us the, the thought behind building this. Well, listen, this center, along with our 911 center, uh, both came out of an idea post 9-11. Uh, the county didn't have infrastructure, didn't have technology, didn't have communications uh, that we certainly uh, needed and recognized in a post 9-11 era. And so this has been a culmination of thinking and working and collaborating since, since then. And so, uh, you know, we were, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the facility during Sandy, but fortunately Sandy allowed us to change and make some modifications to this particular structure uh, that we would indeed need if a hurricane hit. All the sheriffs, as I said, in a post 9-11, Sheriff Joe Oxy when he was here, uh, certainly Sheriff Guadano, and, and then I picked up the ball when I became sheriff, all had a hand in, uh, you know, efforting this cause to build a center for the sheriff's office and consolidate our smaller buildings. You know, in the Monmouth County Sheriff's Office, we had four or five smaller locations uh, that we were using, including trailers. And so this building took all of those employees and all those operations and put it into one uh, big uh, structure like this and upgraded all our technology for our operations center and our 911 center. Now the action doesn't always happen here. You go out in the community and talk to them. Tell us about yeah, your outreach. This is the most important outreach. Uh, you know, listen, uh, our county is really a unique county in the sense that we are one of the safest counties in the state of New Jersey and we pride ourselves in law enforcement. We have tremendous partnerships with the prosecutor's office, uh, Prosecutor Chris Comincioni, the Chiefs of Police Association, all our fire uh, fighters and our EMS staff and our OEM coordinators, and that's where all this occurs. But it starts with education of the public. You know, we always preach, particularly uh, during hurricane season that runs from June 1st to November 30th uh, here in the county, to be prepared. 
have a plan, have a plan for your business, have a plan for your family, uh, have a plan of action, uh, because you just never know what might strike, and you, you'll have to enact that plan. I know in your programs you give out this STORM kit. Tell me what's in it. Okay, so this is uh, one of the programs that we have is STORM, and we use the acronym. This was developed after our uh, 2012 uh, Sandy Hurricane. As you know, uh, Monmouth County got hit pretty hard. And one of those things that we recognized was seniors and readiness for seniors. And so uh, Mike Opegard developed a program called STORM, Seniors Taking on Readiness Measures. And we go out to all the senior uh, developments. Uh, we speak with them about having a plan, having all their information written down, important information, their medications, medications that they would have to bring with them, uh, family contacts, physician contacts, all of those things that we need to help them in case of emergency. And so that we went a step further, and if they complete all that information and complete a plan, they receive one of these storm kits. In the kits, bottled water, pill dispensers, blankets, crank up radio, flashlight, uh, all those things are in this readiness kit. These readiness kits, by the way, are great for families as well. You can get the contents if you go to our app, our Monmouth County Sheriff's Office app. We have all of that information about readiness and preparedness on the application. You just click on it or you can go to ready.gov, either website or application. We'll give you the list of things that you should have ready in case of an emergency. But this is what we developed for the seniors. It's been a tremendous program. We've hit hundreds and hundreds of seniors throughout Monmouth County as part of the education initiative here. We know you were vitally involved with Sandy. What are some of the things that you learned in reference to that? And what would you do differently next time? Well, listen, you know, Sandy, I, I really have to say, Monmouth County did an exceptional job, our emergency management team. As I said, we have one of the best and, and backed up by the Monmouth County Sheriff's Office and then all of those first responders out there. So we did a really uh, tremendous job. One of the things uh, we realized is the seniors, uh, you know, being prepared. So when we had to evacuate them from senior centers, uh, we have, you know, those list of things that they need. The other thing um, that we recognized was the fact that um, we ask people to evacuate, right? And we say evacuate low-lying areas. And that wasn't good enough because what is a low-lying area? And so we developed the first of its kind Know Your Zone program in the state of New Jersey. It was modeled after a program in Florida. Know Your Zone is uh, just that. You can go on our website, on our app, Monmouth County Sheriff's Office app, hit Know Your Zone punch in your address, and that will give you zone A, B, C, or D. So next time when we have a bad storm threatening our, uh, our shores, we're going to say evacuate zone A. Well, I don't know what if I'm in zone A. Well, now you do. You can go right to the website, punch in your address. It will let you know exactly what zone you're in so that when our emergency management team and the local emergency management coordinators call for an evacuation, you know exactly what your zone is. And so it's a tremendous program. We're so proud to have it here in the first of its kind. You can check it out on our website. It's interesting you say that because during Sandy, I did find water where I never thought water yeah. existed. You know, well, that, bridges that, were covered, yeah, right? That, that's true. I mean, listen, that, the Sandy was a storm of, you know, the century we call it here in emergency management. Um, certainly had some characteristics that we had not seen before. You know, but you have to remember, we evacuated some seven, 72,000 residents uh, from 22 towns in that area, right? And so... Uh, it was a tremendous evacuation effort. We had zero loss of life, and you know, uh, other counties uh, weren't so fortunate. So um, we had two major shelters going on. We had a pet shelter going on. Everybody forgets about you know, uh, pets. We had three major points of distribution up in Union Beach and the racetrack and down at Peddler's Village in, in Wall Township. And so all that couldn't happen without the exceptional effort of all our first responders, all our emergency management coordinators from the 53 towns, police chiefs. Again, it takes, it takes an effort by everybody. In reference to recovery, are you still working on recovery? Uh, recovery is still going still on. Going still going on. One, you recognize uh, some of the vulnerabilities that we have, uh, where we need generators in particular sewage plants, in particular water plants, uh, how uh, JCP&L, and they've done a tremendous job upgrading infrastructure uh, here in the county, cutting back trees around the county, all of that counts. Uh, but the other thing is um, certainly in applying for those mitigation grants and working on those generator projects and other projects to beef up all of that infrastructure in the county, um, you know, comes grant money. And as you know, our residents had to elevate their houses, insurance companies and FEMA changed um, A zones and, and B zones, uh, you know, in the flood maps, uh, the flood mapping. And so all of that ha requires funding. Some of that funding is still ongoing. I was down at the uh, you know, United States Congress a couple weeks ago. 
We, we talked about outstanding funding that is still to be delivered to Monmouth County, to the residents, to some businesses, and certainly toward uh, infrastructure for critical infrastructure. You know, we have to take a break now. We come back, I want to talk about the other things that go on here in this building. We'll do that when we come back. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to This is Jersey. Today we're at the Monmouth County Sheriff's Office in Freehold Township. We're in the dispatch center with Sheriff Sean Golden, learning about the men and women on the other end of a 911 call. It is one of the largest centers in the state of New Jersey. We have so many partners in shared service that are all uh, involved in the operation here. So uh, when you look at it, we dispatch some 147 agencies throughout the county of Monmouth. Uh, 50 towns, we answer 911 calls for. We have uh, over half the police departments and more than three quarters of the fire and EMS agencies in the county are dispatched right out of here. So most people think when they dial 911 it goes to someone in their town, but that really isn't the case. How do towns get involved with this system? What happens is when you call 911 from around the county, it does come into the center here. It's a centralized system. We do that because of economies of scale and technology. I mean, you look at the tech uh, that is in this room, uh, it, that's what drives the 911 service today, the, the ability to take text messaging, the ability to do mapping of a particular phone or location, uh, the ability to transfer all that uh, vital information and, and data out to the first responders. And so uh, all of that is uh, what is involved in this uh, 911 center. And it's a partnership. We have a tremendous shared service program led by Freeholder Director Tom Arnone. Uh, the Board of Chosen Freeholders have been so instrumental in supporting this effort of shared services uh, to put, deliver the best technology to our first responders out there. And so towns opt in into the program uh, on a shared service. So uh, as I said, we have over uh, half the towns participating fully and then others in some way, whether we're answering 911 calls, providing some technologies or dispatching various agencies in their particular town. Why do towns not get involved with this system? Well, I think it's a, it's a choice for them. Uh, some uh, still have systems that, they're, that they had invested in and are still using and maybe uh, at the end of life of those systems, they'll switch over to uh, the newer technology. Uh, certainly that is an option. Um, you know, listen, it's uh, really at the discretion of the town. Uh, we, we find that millions of dollars are saved locally on a shared service initiative like this uh, throughout the period of time. And the technology is certainly far more superior than probably what they're experiencing now. And redundancy, you have to have backup and redundancy in these programs um, in order to be successful. While we're sitting in this center, we have a separate backup center down by Jersey Shore University Medical Center that's at the ready. It's a hot center. Technology is hot, meaning it's uh, quick standby and can be activated at any time. With each dispatch position, one could be serving uh, multiple towns at any one time, or how does that work? So as you see with our dispatch positions here, uh, each one has its own specific job task, really. Uh, while all the operators are cross-trained and multitask, uh, each one either answers 911 calls, uh, dispatches, fire and EMS, or solely police dispatch. And, and so, you know, various parts of the room are broken up into quadrants for police dispatch, and then other desk assignments are for 911 specific assignments or uh, fire EMS dispatch. What's the busiest time in this room? As you see, and you can tell by the buzz, the room is always busy. This is a constant 24-7 operation with over 750,000 calls processed a year. Certainly rush hours are a challenge for us. Accidents uh, that may occur out there, storms uh, obviously are, are busy as well. What type of training is involved with those who are here? Um, they go through a tremendous amount of training, Gary. You're talking about when they're hired on prerequisites, they have to seek out uh, two types of training before they're hired. Um, so those are required for them to even, um, for us to even check their background and then bring them into the facility. Then they go up for policy and procedures. Then they go uh, to another classroom for operations. And then they go to a simulator that's attached to the 911 center here. Uh, they do some simulations with our trainers and ultimately come out on the floor. You're talking about a six month period of time before we have them solo on a desk. Uh, that's how much training is involved. There's a tremendous amount of knowledge and um, really uh, processes and operational uh, issues that they have to go through. It is fantastic working here. We have an amazing group of people, but it's an amazing job. Every phone call that comes in here gives us an opportunity to change someone's life, hopefully for the better. So what kind of calls do you think we get here? Everything from barking dogs to loud music to maybe somebody getting into a domestic or delivering a baby on Christmas Eve. 
you want to hear that story? Sure. That story was about 15 years ago, and it was a snowy Christmas Eve, and routine calls come in. I wouldn't say routine, but someone had broken ankle, stomach pains, and then this frantic father called and said, oh my goodness, my wife is having our third baby. We got her in the car. We thought we were going to make it, and we didn't, so we had to run back inside, and we... The police officer got there within about three minutes and we delivered a baby on Christmas Eve and it was one of the best amazing moments of this job in between the other outcomes that may not be as special or fantastic. This is my 26th year that I'm still happy and smiling about the job, which is fantastic. So I started at the old building, smaller facility, and to come here is absolutely amazing. The technology, the room, the space that we here, have here to accommodate all of Monmouth County is absolutely amazing. We have to take a break now. We come back, we want to talk about the police academy and the way you train all the officers that we see out in our community. We'll That's do that when we come back. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to This is Jersey. Today, Sheriff Sean Golden took us to the police academy within Monmouth County Sheriff's Office to give us a closer look at the training involved in producing upstanding police men and women. This is the Monmouth County Police Academy, one of 15 in the state of New Jersey. All our police training, meaning our basic recruit class, which are full-time law enforcement officers, our special classes, SLEO 1 and 2s, which are seasonal along our Jersey Shore here, and our correctional uh, classes are all held here in the Monmouth County Police Academy. This is where all the training occurs for law enforcement in, in Monmouth County and beyond, because we do have shared services with other counties that send their uh, recruits here to the Monmouth County Police Academy. So can individuals sign up and go through the program or do towns need to sponsor them? Uh, the towns need to sponsor them, although we do have now alternate route where individuals can take the Monmouth County Chief's exam. Um, if they place well on the exam, they can sign up and interview for an alternate route where they pay their way through. Uh, we do have about a 93% placement on alternate route candidates that graduate from the Monmouth County Police Academy. We're, we're so proud of the academy here. Uh, one, I graduated from this academy, so it makes me extremely proud to be in charge of the academy. Now, you were an officer in the early 90s, right? Officer with Tom's, uh, with Tom's River Police in Colts Neck, and, you know, and really enjoyed that time, and it really gave me uh, a, a wealth of knowledge in the law enforcement field. And our director, Darrell Breckenridge, is uh, one of the most dedicated directors uh, that we've seen. He certainly has ramped up the academy. Our graduating club, we have hundreds of recruits uh, that come through here. As you can see on a day like today, really busy uh, with activity in terms of in-service training because it's just not about the recruits. It's about continuing education for our law enforcement community. So all of our chiefs of police in the county and the prosecutor's office all share in the resources. We share instructors. Uh, that participate and uh, we all bring back our staff from the sheriff's the prosecutor's office and all our police departments uh, bring back the staff here re-education is the key continuing education is the key it's you know as law enforcement is a challenging environment changing evolution and so all that is done through the police academy so what is boot camp like for a new recruit well listen they come in and we stress teamwork we preach from the beginning together everyone's actions matter and that's collective, right? And so we have to make them part of a team and get rid of the individual attitude uh, that they may be preconceived to. They start training right from the early morning. They're out there doing drill instruction and physical fitness. Uh, I've run with the recruits uh, a couple of times, and boy, they run in any weather, whether it's rain or ice or snow. Uh, they're out there uh, doing their physical training, and then they come in for a classroom setting, firearms, use of force in our uh, gym facility, and um, as you may be aware, we have the, uh, one of the few simulators. Uh, we have the only simulation building in the state of New Jersey with all uh, active simulations and simulators. Uh, it's called the STARS facility. And uh, we have the virtual simulation machine in there, which uh, really accentuates the use of force continuum but more so de-escalation of any types of scenarios and it's really virtual reality uh, in, uh, on steroids. Now I know what I would call the SWAT team doesn't come out of your office, but tell me about that in Monmouth County. Well, you know, everything's joint. Uh, again, it's cooperative. So uh, I have SWAT team members that participate on the MOSERT team. The prosecutor runs the MOSERT team. All of the chiefs of police uh, in various agencies have officers dedicated to it. Uh, we have over 40 officers on the SWAT team from around the county. Same thing with our dive team. The dive team, uh, we call it the MERT team, the Maritime Emergency Response Team. Um, the, the, all those police divers are from different agencies as well as the sheriff's office. And so it takes that collective effort to make those ty type of teams work. And uh, certainly they go through a tremendous amount of training 
uh, to stay proficient. We have to take a break now. We come back. I just want to talk overall about the sheriff's office. We'll do that when we come back. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to This is Jersey. Today we spoke to Sheriff Sean Golden about how the Monmouth County Sheriff's Office provides essential law enforcement resources for the entire county of Monmouth. He also informed us of ways that members of the community can reach the Sheriff's Office anytime around the clock. Sheriff Golden, thank you so much for your time and letting us come in and take a look at what you do here. Tell us how people can learn more about what you Gary, do. Gary, it was a pleasure having you and, and we want to thank all the hard working men and women in the Sheriff's Office that, that really keep our public safe. Um, listen, if you need to be in touch with the Sheriff's Office, social media is where it's at these days. Uh, we have tremendous amount of social media, uh, outgoing messaging and programs that we put on social media. Facebook, Twitter, uh, we're on there. If you can look us up, you can go to our website at MCSO. Uh, nj.org or you can download our app from the Google Play or iPhone store uh, has all the information our social media as well as any of our programs are all listed on the application great well thank you so much for being on our show good luck with all that you do thanks for having me and and thank you for watching we'll see you again next time